Okay, I'm sitting here with a phone in my hand and on the other end of line is Marcus Eriksson. Hi Marcus, how are you? Hi, uh, I am very good, thanks. I'm uh, in Sweden at the moment, so just uh, getting some time to, to relax a bit before the action starts again in Valencia. Yeah, it's been uh, quite a time since last race, uh, race in... Uh, in uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Totally flipped my mind. I've erased it from my memory. Uh, let's focus on the next race weekend. Uh, what have you been up to since lately? Uh, yeah, I've been uh, last week. I was in Austria doing some training uh, for my physical training. Uh, so I go there to Irving Gullner and his fitness center. So I was there doing some proper proper workouts. So been quite sore in my body after that. And then uh, this week I've been in Sweden to. Uh, so I some stuff back home and uh, doing some visits to some of my uh, local sponsors around here and uh, yeah, just uh, also having some time to, to relax a bit, been out fishing and stuff like that. So yeah, it's been quite a good time, but now I'm more than ready to jump in the car again and, and uh, get out and, and drive. Yeah, uh, next race weekend will be in Valencia. We have quite some good memories from last year. And uh, yeah, for those who don't remember you, uh, in the feature star race you started from last row and finished seventh. And on the res reverse grid you started second and won the sprint race. On a street circuit this should be impossible. So what's your strategy for qualifying in Valencia this year? Yeah, I mean, as you said, I have good memories from Valencia, and uh, I know we've been very strong all year with the pace of the car, so I'm sure we, the team is going to give me again a very, very good and um, competitive car. So it just, uh, for me, it's very, very important that I get the Friday right, so I can qualify where I should be. Uh, so definitely a top six qualifying would be very, very good, because I feel I'm ready to be up there and fighting for the podiums and, and wins, you know, so... Uh, my goal is definitely to do the qualifying well and, and qualify up there, you know, top six, and, and be able to fight in the front because I think uh, that's been our problem so far that we haven't, for different reasons, got the qualifying together. And then it's always a catch up for the races. And I know we've been very strong in the races, but still it's, it's too far to, to go from 15th or something like that. So we need to work really hard and focus a lot on the qualifying and make sure we do that well. And then I think we should be set up for uh, two very good races. Yeah, Valencia is a street circuit with everything from tight happens to uh, the extremely long straight. Uh, to me, the key point seems to be to get a good turn 8, go over the bridge and carry speed through turn 10, heading out on the long straight. Uh, what is the greatest challenge with the Valencia track? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a quite a uh, different track. It's, it's, it's a bit of a mix between a street track and a normal track, as it's... Uh uh, it's built like a street track but still has some run-up areas and stuff so it's, it's quite similar to the Abu Dhabi track and uh, I think uh, as always it's very important that you get a uh, good uh, uh, space and you can put the lap together properly uh, without getting into traffic and uh, uh, there is some you know some important areas on the track like you say out on the long straight it's very very important that you get on the throttle early and and, uh, and get all the speed you need out on the straight. So it's, it's many things you need to focus on, but uh, uh, definitely Valencia is a challenging track and, and it's going to be very tough to be up there in the front. Uh, what tyres are you using in Valencia? Uh, it's a good question. I think it's softs actually, but I'm not 100% sure. But uh, it's, yeah, it's either soft or medium, that's for sure. But uh, I know we're very strong in both uh, both uh, these compounds, so I'm, I'm pretty confident we should be quick. Yeah, great. So qualifying is on Midsummer's Eve. Last year it was on Midsummer's Eve. When was the last time you celebrated a proper Swedish Midsummer? I mean, with rain, smogold, and I'm having too much, much strawberries. Uh, yeah, that was uh, probably quite a while ago. I mean, uh, out in Europe it's, uh, it's not really... Uh, that big with uh, midsummer and it doesn't celebrate it that much and uh, uh, it's not like in Sweden where we're crazy about it uh, but <laughs> but uh, yeah I mean uh, last year I was uh, having one of the best midsummers I can remember that's for sure and uh, uh, it would be nice to do something similar to that uh, this this time as well yeah I guess we'll have to have a, have a snaps for you all uh, something we need to talk about something 
I've gotten lots of questions about. How about building that front wing with Sam Bird? Are you ready yet? I'm ready, yes, but uh, we, we, we have, haven't actually done it because we haven't been able to be in the workshop at the same time. So uh, Sam has obviously been in Canada and I've been in Sweden and uh, yeah, we haven't done it yet. So um, unfortunately not, but uh, I think uh, I've, been, I've been a couple of days in the workshop and I, I, I know it's a lot of work for the guys and I mean, they're doing a fantastic job and they don't need any more stuff to do, uh, you know, to, to, to keep them busy. So uh, uh, the plan is to not break them again. <laughs> Yeah, I, go, I was a bit worried about two things. Who would race with the wing that you built? <coughs> Hopefully not you. And I know you're both great drivers, but I don't know about your mechanic skills. I mean, I would if you would mix up downforce with upforce, I would... <laughs> bit awesome to hear the commentator. there. It's a great start here in Valencia, and one of the ice sport cars is flying off the grid. Five feet <laughs> off the ground, actually. <laughs> So yeah, we, I mean, uh, I I would not maybe like to race uh, with a front wing. I, I build myself, that's for sure. <laughs> so it it will be the skilled ice sport mechanics putting it together then. <laughs> yes, uh, and I think that's uh, that's a very good thing. <laughs> ah, that's great. Uh, I thought we'd finish off with six quick questions. Uh, the questions are short, but you you're not obliged to give a short answer. Okay, you ready? Yes, ready. Monza or Spa-Francorchamps? Uh, I would say Monza probably. I think uh, the the whole uh, atmosphere there with all the fans and, and the nice park you, the track is in. I think it's a fantastic track and also with all the history it has. And uh, to be honest, it's, it's, it's a very different track to all the others. And uh, yeah, for some reason, I really like to drive around there. Um, but obviously, Spa is also a fantastic place to drive and. Uh, and a great track, but yeah, if I have to pick someone, I w would pick Monza. Okay, uh, Pirelli or Bridgestone? <laughs> uh, it's, it's quite difficult, I think uh, it's so different, the tyres, but uh, I think for the racing and everything, I think the Pirelli has been very good for this year, and, uh, and I've been happy with uh, how my driving has been on the Pirelli, so uh, as, uh, again, if I had to pick, I probably would say Pirelli. Yeah. Okay, then over to understeer or oversteer? Oversteer, definitely. I'm uh, doing a lot of driving on ice and in the winter time, and, and I like, uh, you know, I, I, I've always prefer a car which is very good in the front and, and having a more loose rear end. Uh, so for me, definitely oversteer is to prefer. Yeah. Okay. Comparing the two cars, the GP2-08 or the GP2-11 car? Uh, I would say the new car, uh, the newest car, the 11 one, because I think it's, first off, it looks a lot better for me. I think it's more clean in the design, and uh, uh, I think it looks very good. And also, it's, it's nice to drive, and it's a uh, yeah, nicely built car, and, and, and obviously the last one was as well. But yeah, for me, the, the new one is another step forward. Yeah. Okay, over to a hard one. Ferrari or McLaren? <laughs> <laughs> um, Ferrari. I think Ferrari is uh, it's always, you know, since you were a kid and you were watching Schumacher winning in the Ferrari, it's always been, uh, uh, been very, very uh, nice to see Ferrari win. And, and I like the, the Ferrari cars and I've always done, so I have to say Ferrari. Okay. But I, w I wouldn't say no to McLaren if they ah, did no. not to be honest, no. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> Over to the last question. Brunettes or redheads? Oh, difficult one. Uh, brunettes, I would say. But isn't your girlfriend a blonde? Th that was uh, a trick yeah. question. <laughs> it was a trick question, yeah. Yeah, she is blonde, but I, I was, you know, I'm very, very honest with these questions, and I thought they were very serious, so I, had, I thought, you know, I have to answer from the direct questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great to hear you. Would be obviously, obviously, it's always blonde, otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> you will never be a politician. That's great. <laughs> okay, it's been great talking to you. Thank you very much, Marcus. All right, thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of almost 2,200 fans, best of luck in Valencia, and uh, hope you bring home two Pirelli caps after the podium ceremony. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, thanks a lot to everyone out there supporting me and, and keep on the the heat on the Facebook side and and, uh, and all the supporting uh, messages and, and texts is is really you know it's very uh, very nice to read and it helps me a lot. So so keep the good work up and uh, and I will make sure. Uh, I give, give you some good action and good wrestles down in Valencia. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.